it was that was just practice. We we uh, I, I'm amazed at how accurate the forecast was in terms of of direction, but it missed us by about 40 miles. So that was we we just got a slight breeze out of it. Okay. And there's Jeremy and other people coming on. Listen, before we get going here, I'm going to tell you that I'm going to drop out because uh, Ann and I are going to have brunch with Randy and Charlene down at the, one of the fine restaurants in town that has an outdoor facility. So uh, I'm, we got to leave it for the past. So I need to get whatever out of here you, quick. Whatever you think's fair, John. <laughs> so I'll just quit now and you can talk about me however you want. Sure. Yeah, some people have better things to do, I guess. <laughs> I hope so. Hi, Jeremy. Uh, take care, John. Yeah, take care. Bye bye. See you. Okay. Good to Bye, Jeremy. You, All right. Let's see. Jeremy. Here. Well, there's. Hello, Melvin. Hi, how are you, Vic? There's Melvin Beasley. How about Melvin. that? <laughs> Remember him, Bob Mason? Yes, I do. All right. Did I see John Flanagan on there? He he saw you come up and he laughed. I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> <clears throat> Did uh, were were any of you guys on for much time with John? Because I think he connected quite a bit early. I I get emails telling me that uh, that folks are waiting if I haven't logged on yet. So did you guys get to talk with him much? <laughs> Not me. I just came on. Just about. Just been. So, so this is my first time on here. Do you guys meet like once a month or something like that, just to talk about Crawford County in the old days, or what? That's it. That's about okay, it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. The the second Sunday of each month, and it's oh second Sunday, okay. Yeah, second Sunday, and it's the okay. just because it's easy to remember. But same sure, same time, absolutely. five p.m. Eastern, and it's the same meeting ID. It never changes. It's set up as a recurring meeting. I'm I'm Mike Flanagan's grandson, and he'll. I was just on a, a family call uh, a little while ago, so he he will be joining. Uh, any okay. minute now. Yeah, I, I speak to Mike on the phone every once, you know, once in a great while, and uh, he seemed pretty uh, vigorous the last time I called. He lives with his daughter there outside Washington, doesn't he? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm hmm. He uh, he's not much to initiate phone calls or yeah, right. or <laughs> things anymore. But if you if you call him and uh, he recognizes the phone number, he'll be happy to hear yeah. from you. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, most people my age seem are like that about initiating phones. Though I think we're all we're all scarred by that uh, a long distance phone call costs an arm and a leg <laughs> mentality. You know, that you you just have to talk in telegrams and hang up real quick. You know, <laughs> it's free now. It's you know, it's uh, but we I think many people of my age have that mindset still. That's a that's a good point. Yeah. That's get that's given him the the benefit of the doubt. I think he uh, <laughs> he, he might just be less <clears throat> sociable uh, these days. Yeah. He he always loves, uh, you know, when he talks or talks with or, or sees folks. But he uh, somehow leading up to it, it's like it's uh, I don't know. Maybe it's nerves or something. Uh, it's like it's yeah. uh, it's. Uh, it's just at, it's just out of the ordinary routine. Exactly, I think that's, that, I that's all I it is. Which mean, yeah, you know, those of us uh, that grew up in English, it certainly was, a, I guess, a leave it to Beaver experience. I remember several of us, Mike Flanagan, for example, and and uh, Bob Gillen and, and and Ronnie Kissel, could just decide to go uh, sleep out in the woods one night and take our sleeping bags, and we didn't ever ask about the farm owner or anything of the guy that owned the woods. <laughs> We just go out there and uh, you know build a fire and sleep in our sleeping bags and tell stories and uh, on a couple of occasions we forgot the can opener for the beans and uh, you can open a can of beans with a hunting knife but it is not easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Robert Mason. Yep, that's on here. Yep. 
We're, you're in California, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Hey, Michael. Michael Pale. Oh, Michael. Victor Meganetti. Meganetti, all right. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing, Victor? I'm doing okay, Michael. How are you doing? I'm doing better. Great, great. And I can't believe how good all of us look. <laughs> <laughs> That's because of failing eyesight. That's it. That's it. The eyesight's are going. <laughs> everything, everything works out together. All right. Here, here's our, here's our schoolhouse. Good old oh, English yeah. high school. Everybody yeah, remembers nobody that. Nobody uses it, do they? Pardon? Is it empty? Uh, very empty. It was torn okay. down thirty-five it's years ago. Yeah. It's gone completely. Yeah, it's torn down. Oh, it's been torn down. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have a picture. I don't know whether it's... Raise it a little higher, um, Robert. There you go. Okay. Huh? I recognize some of those yahoos. Well, you gotta, uh, you gotta speak, Bob. S speak because uh, for the folks who are on speaker view, they're they're only gonna see it if uh, if they hear if the uh, microphone is picking up your voice. Okay. Well, I I think this is a eighth grade basketball team. Mm. Who's the Who's the coach? Oh, uh, Victor, Victor's dad. Oh, that's Hester McGinnity. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that was. We won the Crawford County Tournament that year in the eighth grade. Is Michael is Michael Flanagan on in that group? I believe he is. Yeah, he's in the second middle row. Okay. Well, we only lost one game that year. Is that right? That's right. We lost the last game. We had to play Morgan Township Third Gymnasium. Okay. Hmm. Now I've got a picture. And Jeremy, you say we have to talk to make it clear? Well, uh, it, depending on if you're using speaker view or gallery view. If it's speaker view, it's only the person who's talking whose image is uh, is visible to everyone. Yeah. So yeah. Whoever, you, says, it, whoever said something last, the picture's up there. I see, uh, I see a fellow by the name of Bill Beasley in this one, one of the coaches, and John Dotson, the other coach. John Benny. On Benny Dotson, that's right. I see uh, Orton and Mike and Vic. And that, you can't see them very well. I, and down at the bottom, I see. Dembo. Yeah, Ronnie Dembo. Don, Wei Don Wiseman. Song. At Vogelsong, too, at number 12, right? Yeah, Arnold, Arnold Vogelsong. And uh, there's Wanda Gail Faulkner and Mildred Real, the two cheerleaders there. So Back in the good old days. Back in the good old days is right. Just the old <laughs> days. <laughs> uh, did Philip Smith, I know, contacted you, Melvin. Did he think he might be able to come on this evening? He he was going to try it, but he didn't sound very confident. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm at my daughter's house, or I probably wouldn't be on. <laughs> I thought Bob Roberts might be on, but... 
hopefully he can join us. It, had you been in touch with him, Gordon? Uh, yes, I have. He was interested, and uh, I told him maybe that he and Mark could get together, but uh, apparently they have not done that. Huh. Well, Gordon, I'm not sure I ever actually met you. Were you in the same class, high, sc uh, high school class with Vic? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, Melvin, we, uh, we had that uh, entrance exam <clears throat> to see if we were accepted into the high school. Do you recall that? Age you, were, you, mean? you scored the highest in the county. <laughs> yeah, I did. And I, I think I was number three or something like That's that. That's pretty good. And the, the story behind that is that uh, we lived in Grantsburg, and my dad would go down to the store and uh, pick up the newspaper the weekly paper, and he came home and he said, uh, well, here's a, a list of the students who were accepted in the high school. And he had turned from the first page to the second, and, and he said, uh, here are the names. And he, na he named the ones from Grantsburg, and I thought, my name's not on there. And uh, he said, no, your name's not in it. I, I looked, and I couldn't understand that. I said, well, wait a minute. Here on the first page, it shows the top five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you good. were number one. I remember that. Well, I didn't know there was any such thing as not being accepted into high school. I thought any time you graduated from the eighth grade. Well, I, th I think it was just I think it was just to get us uh, indoctrinated into the high school uh, okay. realm. You know, I start thinking about it, huh? Right, but. Uh, uh, it was scary for a kid from Grantsburg to ride yeah, the bus right. in to take that test. <laughs> you know, in, in the realm of trivia, my dad got the highest in the county in 1913. <laughs> oh, how about that now? He was my favorite teacher, Mel. Yeah. I'll tell you, he's just uh, <clears throat> such a wonderful guy. Yeah, but I never did see him run through the board like he promised. He said, now watch me, uh, class, while I run through the board on this question I'm going to put up on this uh, mathematical <laughs> computation. I think there was an announcement so run through the board. I think there was an announcement once, Vic, that uh, uh, all you students who are taking physics run down to the basement. Yeah, I think so. There were some good times. You know, when you had the... Uh, the picture of the school up there, it reminded me that <clears throat> one night I was roaming around English, nothing better to do, and I noticed that workmen were installing that uh, that uh, fire escape slide, and I went up uh, to, I guess it was room 23, wasn't it, that it connected to? Next, the 21 was on the, room 21 was on the southwest corner, and room 23 was on the uh, southeast corner. So they were going through that wall to attach that uh, slide. So I thought that was very interesting. I watched the whole process. Mm -hmm. That was uh, the one time I didn't watch them slice bologna at the JC store. Oh. <laughs> You know, even though I went to high school in New Albany, I used to uh, spend one weekend a month in English in the summers. And one weekend I happened to be there and you guys that in the class I would have been were doing a class play. I know I mentioned this to Vic before, but I thought it was really remarkable that you found a, a play with eight parts in it, exactly eight. <laughs> and every single member of the high school class had a part in the class play. And that's that's really unique. I, I've told that story to lots of people, you know, normally in a big high school like New Albany, there's these these people that are the in group of everything, you know, the, the most popular class president, they all do the same thing. And uh, a ha a ha there's a handful of the social butterflies, so to speak. And that was that was remarkable from a participation standpoint. Yes, it had to be five boys and three girls. Yeah, it, yeah. Exactly. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, <clears throat> when, know. Uh, That's Gordon when we entered high school, the freshman class, uh, typically we were, the, the school was graduating about 35 ordinarily, but 
but we started with 29 in the freshman year, and then we ended with eight. Wow. Here, this guy. Granddad, you, yeah, yeah, Granddad's noticing that there's someone new this week, and he's trying to figure out who, who it is. Uh, <laughs> It's 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 someone in California right now, Granddad. Who is it? Who 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 do you know who lives in California? Uh, I'm Mike. This is Melvin Beasley. Melvin Beasley. Yep. Is, is he in California now? Sure is. Is that that's Melvin there? That's yep. Melvin. That's Melvin right there. How about that? Well, now, I've got a list of all the graduates that ever graduated from English high school, 1908 to 1976. So several Flanagans, a few McGinnities, a few Huss, several Huss, and uh, not Bob Mason. You didn't make it in English, did you? No, I, I graduated from Corden. Uh, that's too bad, too bad. <laughs> you know, his, his dad, Paul, went to work for, for, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of it. Who was it? Who, who was it that Paul Mason went to work to Corden for? He, he had a, uh, automobile, Oh, Parks? Parks, yeah. Parks. Es Estel Parks. Yeah. That's what it was. That's right. Yeah. Now, now here, Lowell, Lowell and Estelle are both still living. Now, say that again, Bob. I said Lowell and Estelle are still living. They're both in Corden. Yes, sir. Is that right? Lowell, Lowell Park. Lowell was the oldest. Right, right. So, so Bob, where are you, where are you and Gordon living now? I, I live in Reston, which is not about 15 miles from Leesburg, where Mike's from. Mm. I live in uh, Lebanon, Indiana. Mm. Okay. I don't look Lebanese, but I live in Lebanon. <laughs> Where did that town get its name, Gordon? I'm not sure of that. I uh, I should know, but I yeah. I'll Google it. Where did Where did English Indiana? Where did English get its name? Well, yeah, we, we know that there was a, a legislator named John English. Used to be a statue of him down in the park. Remember? Yeah, I, I, his name was William, wasn't it? William oh, it H. Been, English. Right. Been. Michael's right. William H. English. He was the district representative in Congress, and he also ran for vice president, I believe it was after the Civil War, like 1876, maybe, under a, with a Civil War general, and they came close to winning. I forget the, I forget the presidential candidate that year. You know, but they've got... I, I, They've got a duplicate statue of, way of uh, old, we call him Old Man English. In what town? I'm going to quiz you guys. Where's the other statue of Old Man English? Melvin? I have no idea. Michael? No. Anybody know? Scottsburg. Yeah. He's in the, uh, in the front lawn of the courthouse at Scottsburg, Indiana, because mm -hmm. his home was real close to Scottsburg. You know, speaking of speaking of town names, I always wondered why uh, two towns in southern Indiana had the same names as towns in northern Italy, Marengo and Paoli. <laughs> I asked Phil Smith that. He lived in Paoli all his life, and he says, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> And most most of those towns in Indiana have uh, uh, the foreign names pronounce it differently. Yeah. <laughs> so, like Valparaiso, for example. Dubois County. Yeah. yeah. 
I told a French guy about Versailles, Indiana, one time. He said, no, you got to be kidding. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I was just reading in the Clarion, the local Crawford County weekly paper, that there's a movement underway, Gordon, to move Old Man English from the park up to the Veterans Memorial, right on the highway. You know where that is? Sure, yes. Yep. I was there for the dedication of that, uh, that memorial. I think you, I think I stepped on a, one of your bricks. <laughs> well, I didn't a, feel that. <laughs> you, you've, got a, you've got a brick with your name on it in there. Yeah. Yeah, and my, my brothers and my brother-in-law. I'm yes. going to uh, uh, have a co first cousin, uh, Gordon, that lived in Lebanon, Eldon Mason. He died about two years ago from uh, effects of the Vietnam War. I don't think uh, he, had a, he had a son graduate this year from high school. Oh, I see. Sawyer, I like uh, his name is Sawyer Mason. I like living here because uh, uh, it's a small community and, and uh, uh, until Facebook, people didn't argue very much here. <laughs> <laughs> like they do now. <laughs> uh, it, it tickles me on Facebook uh, occasionally, well, more than occasionally, people will jump on Facebook and say, have you lost power? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right in the same community. Do you, have you lost power? Melvin, when, when are you going to make it down to this part of the country? I mean, southern Indiana again. Well, I don't have any immediate plans to it. The last time I was there was, was because one of my relatives, uh, an in-law died, and I hope, <laughs> I, ho I hope that's not the, the the case of uh, the next time, but it could be. Yeah, yeah. I know uh, Melvin and Philip Smith and I had uh, lunch out at the golf course. The old Bill Balt's farmhouse is the clubhouse for the golf course in English. And that was a, a good day. We reminisced yeah. quite a bit that day. Mm -hmm. Of course, Philip and, Philip and Melvin, I think, uh, share the same idea leaving English at the end of the eighth grade. I think you did, didn't you, Melvin? Yeah, I did. And Philip, I think I, I think he went to high school one year, but he left promptly. Oh, okay. After. okay. His his dad sold insurance, as I recall. Sounds he right. Moved, and he moved to Paola for uh, more clientele, I think. He sold all the <laughs> insurance he could in English and moved to a bigger city, Paola. Yeah. Well, how's the virus hitting your area, Melvin? Well, I think we have a lot more restrictions because there's a lot more people that would be right next door to each other if they didn't do it. So you guys, you guys live in a more relaxed area, I'll tell you that for sure. There's no sit-down restaurants open here at this time, uh, other than uh, if they have outside tables, and that's about it. And all the bars are closed and uh, that sort of thing. And people are supposed to wear masks in some places. You, some locations you can get a ticket for not wearing a mask out of doors. Right. Was that in California? Yeah, California. Back yeah, Gordon, I, I guess it helps, but it's uncomfortable. <laughs> how's the uh, virus around Lebanon, Indiana, Gordon? Uh, we're do we're doing pretty well here. Indianapolis is, uh, of course, thirty miles away, and they have. Uh, they have a problem, but uh, uh, last night I was at a uh, car show in Avon, and uh, in Hendricks County, they are more relaxed. People were not wearing masks, but uh, uh, the car show benefits the uh, Indy Honor Flight. You know, I volunteer uh, with the Indy Honor Flight, so I go there uh, usually every Saturday night, and uh, uh, then here in Lebanon, it's a uh, it's a little more relaxed, but uh, we still uh, are wearing masks in the stores and so on. 
Oh, Vic, I wanted to uh, mention one thing on your list of uh, graduates from English high school. Uh, one of my sisters, uh, Velma, did not graduate. She dropped out of school, got married. But 11 of us in my immediate family did attend uh, English high school and uh, 10 graduated from there. That's, that's pretty good so average. That's we, pretty good. We, we were keeping the teachers employed and uh, invigorated, <laughs> I think. Right. Now, Gordon, this is kind of a personal question. How many bedrooms did you have at your house in Grantsburg? I always said we had six rooms and path. Six <laughs> rooms and path. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, Frank and I shared a bed, and he said I had the coldest feet in the world. <laughs> okay. And you know, uh, we lost Frank uh, uh, February of last year, and uh, uh, after after my wife died uh, five years ago this month, one year later, my sister Alma died, and within within thirteen months, I lost three sisters. Why? So, yeah. Uh, now I'm I'm the oldest in the family at the moment. Yeah, my, uh, my daughter uh, married a fellow from Denver, Colorado. He grew up in a family of nine, six boys and three girls, and they li lived in a three-bedroom house. Wow. Uh, my mother With one had, bathroom. Yeah, my mother had 14 babies, uh, 12 lived to adulthood, two died long before I was born, but... Uh, uh, it uh, it was certainly a, a big family, and uh, we were pretty close at that time. And and some of us, of course, uh, remained very close over the years. And as in most families, because of geography and so on, uh, uh, we didn't get together a lot. And I I regret that really. It would have been nice to have had more family reunions, but uh, uh, you just can't uh, get everyone together at one time it seems I also one my uh, uncle Lawrence had seven children it was six boys and one girl I think they all graduated from English high school Donald the yeah. oldest one was in the in the same class I was would have been in the graduated in 53. Vic mentioned this. Only two of them left. On a, another subject, Vic, I, I was reminded when Vic mentioned that we had lunch, Phil and Vic and I, we had lunch there a couple of times. And uh, the first time I had trouble finding that clubhouse of, uh, of the, for the golf uh, course, you know, and I finally pulled in there a little, a little bit late. And those guys were saying, you're the only guy that, his, that ever got lost in English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I was going through some files today, and I saw, <clears throat> you can't see this, but it's, it's uh, utilizing new medical tech. And the guy that wrote it, it's Gordon J. Husk, former chairman, board of governors, Shriners Hospital, Chicago. I don't know. I've I've heard of that guy before sometime, but uh, I've I've tried to get Gordon to even show me the good old Masonic handshake, and he said, "No, Vic, I can't do that. I can't do that." <laughs> Vic, that uh, I rec I recognize that picture. That's a that's a three D printer uh, uh, creation of a, of an actual spine of a child and. Uh, uh, that uh, that was done at our hospital in Chicago. I uh, I still attend meetings there. We're meeting by Zoom now, just like we are here. But but uh, otherwise, I go to the monthly meetings. I'm an emeritus member of the board now. Yeah. That, uh, that 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 is an actual spine. You see how crooked it is. It's a scoliosis case. And oh boy. And uh, uh, it's a I call it payday for a volunteer when we see a child walk who otherwise would not.
When, <clears throat> when was that picture taken? When was that 3D printing <clears throat> done? That would have been about uh, six or seven years ago, probably. Um, I'm not sure of the date. 3D printers are becoming more common now, but that would have been very rare six or seven yeah. years ago, I guess. It, it was exciting to see that, definitely. Yeah. Gordon, Gordon I wanted to ask you, uh, when you were going through Masonic Lodge and all that, did they have the black ball system? I have no idea about that. Okay. <laughs> I know at the at the fire museum where I I volunteer every almost every Friday at our local fire museum, which has one of the oldest fire trucks in America, 1756 fire truck, and we consider one of the five best fire museums in America. However, we have two black ball machines. Now. If you've never known what a black ball machine was, and, and in the early days of firefighting, everybody was a volunteer. There were no paid fire uh, firemen in America until the 1870s. But before that, you'd appear before all the other firemen, you'd give your speech, you'd leave the room. And then you'd go up to this box and had white marbles in it and black marbles in it. And you'd cup the white one in your hand if you wanted that person to be a fireman or you'd cup the black one if you didn't want him and if you open that up and there's one black marble that person has been black balled. Say it, black balled yep. black balled and that's where the term came from now a guy the other day said i believe the masons still do that do you think they do gordon i think they're not going to tell you yes uh, you know, you, you raised the issue of, of the Masonic Lodge. I might mention that uh, the reason I joined in English when I was living in Indianapolis was that Irvin Farr and my brother Don belonged to that lodge. And I knew if, if they belonged to it, it was something I wanted to join. <laughs> I drove down from Indianapolis on the 1st, 13th, and 20th of June to get my three degrees. And uh, uh, Leslie Brown was master of the lodge at the time. And uh, I heard uh, I heard people talking, not that some of these people are not from English. I don't recognize the voices. And uh, I later learned that all the past masters from the lodges in Crawford County had driven into English to do my master mason degree. Well, and I have uh, always appreciated that. Yeah, that was up up above on the second floor above uh, Johnson's Grocery, Green Lantern area. Right. Yeah. It was. Uh, my uh, my brother-in-law Ernie Condra uh, belonged there, and Glenn King, his uh, brother-in-law, and uh, of course a lot of other people you know uh, belonged there. It was a very uh, active lodge at that time. Of course, now it does not exist. It uh, was merged into uh, Eckerty. Is there really a lodge at Eckerty? Yes. Yes, there is. That's the only thing in Eckerty, I think, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Although they do have a really nice Amish restaurant just a couple miles out of Eckerty. On the new highway they built, few years ago to hook in with right. I'd like to get down there sometime and, and uh, see some of those places. I've I've talked to you about it, but I, I've not seen those places for years. There was a Schwartz family that uh, almost outdid your family. Uh, had 12 children and all of them worked in the restaurant. Got all my kids working in there. Now that was 15 years ago. Some of them still work there now, but the new highway came right through the middle of his Amish farm. So he built this big, huge restaurant. It's very nice and the food is great. And he uses as much produce as he can raise on his own farm to cook in the restaurant. I have seen the uh, Facebook page for that restaurant. It's interesting. What's Jeremy, it what's it? Pardon? What's it, what's it called? Schwartz's restaurant or something? It's uh, 
Hertz Family Restaurant, I believe is the name of it. Yeah. Yeah, do they have, have musical performers there sometimes too? They do. They do. They have bands that play on certain nights. Yeah. It's cafeteria. And most of the stuff is home cooked, home baked pies and things like that. So it's a lot of good. Michael, when you're gonna come back to Indiana. Who me? Yes, Mike. When, when am I going to? Yes. Well, when, when my daughter kicks me out. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you at your daughter's house now? Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Well, the, the next uh, total solar eclipse is, I think, April of 2024, and that's supposed to go right over Bloomington. Oh, that's right. That's right. I mean, I think that's a little too, too far off for the next trip, but... It's, it's, it's something <laughs> well, to shoot for. I think, yeah. Now, Bob, you missed that one, did you? The total eclipse uh, two years or so ago. Yeah. Yeah. We drove uh, Jeremy and uh, and John and others went all the way down to Paducah, Kentucky. Yeah, I went there. Had about 20, what, 22 or so of us yeah. gathered there? Yeah. Vic, uh, yeah. Do you know where Ernie Scowden lives now? Uh, yes. Uh, but I tried to call him to get him on this Zoom meeting, but I called three times, no answer. And I just talked to him about six weeks ago. Oh, I don't know what's going on with Bub Scouting. What about uh, Ronnie Kissel? I think you tried to contact him and had no luck there, huh? No luck with Ronnie Kissel. I had an old phone number and tried. I'm concerned about Ron Kissel. Haven't heard anything about him for years now. Yeah, I tried years ago to get in touch with him by, you know, on the internet. And I never, I never found, I found his history of being in the Navy, but I never found anything current. I think he made it a career of the Navy, didn't he? He did. He did. He became a chief petty officer. I'm not mm -hmm. sure how many stripes and all that, but that was that was pretty good. Yeah. Michael could have made a, a, a career at it, but you you got discharged, didn't you, Mike? Yeah. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> and so did Gordon. We all joined that together and uh, well, in the reserves, right? Naval yes. reserves. Naval reserves. We weren't in their active duty ever, but no, well, we did that to keep them getting. What date? Uh, what what year did you guys join the naval reserve? You remember, Mike? Well, we joined before I was out of school. You so, were still in high school? I would guess 40, 49, maybe. No, Boy, no. That, right? Huh? No, that was too early. 49, you were only, you're only 15 years old then. I joined in January 53. Well, I joined in, uh, I joined in 1952, but I joined in Evansville, and then I go, uh, joined you guys after I had that motorcycle accident. And uh, uh, and then I returned to Evansville after that, and then to Indianapolis. And getting my records transferred from, you know, we uh, in Evansville, we were in the Ninth Naval District. So the commandant of the Ninth Naval District was in Great Lakes. You joined in Louisville, and you were in the Fifth Naval District. So Norfolk was where your commandant was. So my records had to be transferred from Evansville to Com 9 and Great Lakes to Com 5 in Louisville, <laughs> and then to Louisville. They, they got really messed up by the time I got to Indianapolis, but I got discharged in yeah. 1960. 
Mike and I did our uh, our boot training at Great Lakes. Remember that, Mike? Absolutely. Yes, sir. I was there in October of 1952. You probably were there in 53. Yep. Oh. So did you guys have to do that six month thing? No, no, but we'd have to go out on uh, training duty on a ship every year for two weeks. Okay. If, as long as you maintain that, that kept you out of the draft then? That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. But we had to go to classes once a week. Yeah. yeah. They called us uh, week, weekend warriors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And we, uh, we attended those drills at uh, Stanford Field. And Vic, maybe you know the, uh, the story of the, the, when uh, uh, there was an airplane from Puerto Rico that came into Stanford Field and crashed. That's correct. It had, had military on it. That's you correct. Know that year that was? That would have been about 53 or probably about 54. Was it? I, I wasn't sure of the timing. Yeah, several people killed in that crash. Military right. men from Puerto Rico. Right. Well, Vic, Vic, your brother uh, Doug actually went in the Navy, didn't he? Yeah, my brother Bob and brother Doug went into the Navy for uh, four years. Yeah. 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 Now, Melvin, you didn't have any sisters or other brothers, did you? No, no, no direct ones. I had two half sisters. Uh, right. My mother remarried. That's right. Now your mother and your dad wound up at Providence Nursing Home in New Albany at the same time, didn't they? No, not really. She just visited him there when he oh. was uh, when he was uh, living there in the late last few years of his life. But she yeah. was still living at home. Oh, okay. But she came and saw him. Okay. That's she good. used to work as a practical nurse at Green Valley Hospital, though. Okay. I, I had three, three of my grandchildren, grandsons, who uh, were in the Navy, and, uh, and the oldest ended up marrying a sailor. <laughs> well, could be worse. They could have yeah. done worse than that. They could have married a Marine or an <laughs> Army person. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> By the way, uh, the, the, the youngest sailor got wed yesterday. And we had a wedding in the family yesterday. Wow. Okay. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't go, though, because of... It was it was at Virginia Beach. But they, okay. they actually had a, a physical ceremony with guests. Yeah, about twenty guests. Um, I guess we're all family <laughs> connected. Anyway, the name uh, grandson's name is Ryan Penaranda. He married Chanelli Estrella. Well, <laughs> tell, tell them Estrella means star in Spanish. Estrella is Estrella and star in Spanish. Okay, who can, who can identify this building? The railroad station. You got you got to talk, Vic, so uh, okay, so everyone can that, see it. That's that's the. Uh, Railroad Depot in English. And uh, who remembers who the operator was that ran the telegraph key? Does anybody remember his name? Yeah. It's, sometimes I can think of his name and sometimes I can't, but he'd let me come in and watch him send out telegraphic messages. And then occasionally he'd get a long pole, probably about eight foot long with a big Y on the end of it and a cord stretched across it. He'd put a message inside that cord, wrap it put up. A mail bag up there. No, no mail bag, just a message. Really? He'd oh. hold it and here came the steam locomotive roaring in and the somebody, either the fireman or the engineer had his arm out 
and it would catch right in the crook of his elbow, <laughs> pull the message in, and away they'd go. They'd keep on going. That was mm -hmm. one way they got signals to one another. And sometimes, I'm not sure, I never saw them use a mailbag, but they mm -hmm. also used torpedoes. They had, uh, torpedo was about, probably about three or four inches square. And we were able to find some that weren't, that weren't exploded, but they used those and they'd strap them. They had lead, uh, lead strap arounds. You'd strap them on the rail. And when the train was coming through, bam, bam, if there were two of them, and that, that sent a message, stop at this next station or something. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it'd be as many as three and sometimes just one. And they would really explode with a loud bang when we would get a big concrete block, get behind something and drop it on that torpedo. Boom, it'd blow that concrete block apart, send <laughs> shards of, of cement in all directions, but we'd be hidden someplace behind a barrier. People don't do those sort of things for fun anymore, do they? <laughs> nope. <laughs> probably not. It's a good thing, probably. That's that's why they don't have any three finger browns anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, at Herndon High School here, they 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 uh, put a Volkswagen Beetle of them on the roof of school. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> they also would turn pigs loose in the hallways. Oh boy. That would have been a dirty trick. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, we lost Bob. He just, there he is. There's Bob. Hey, Gordon, Bob. One, I got in trouble one time, Gordon. I hitchhiked to Grantsburg. And just as you go into Grantsburg, it was a filling station on the right. Does that ring a bell? Yes. And we went in that filling station. He was selling firecrackers. And it was against the law to sell firecrackers in Indiana in those days. But I think Joe Tyler and I went in, bought some firecrackers. We were setting them off in the schoolyard the next day, having a good time. And... Uh, well, we got called in right away, and where'd you get those firecrackers? I'm gonna tell your dad. Well, my dad just taught 25 feet away in the eighth grade room right next to the office. I thought, oh boy, I hope he doesn't tell my dad. I don't know whether he ever did or not. My dad didn't say anything. We had to tell where we got the firecrackers, and I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Some of the kids used to get mail order, uh, big, great big packages of fireworks of various kinds, I think. Yep. You could, you could order, the comic books had a little clip out. You could clip it out and send in your $3 and something, and you could get some, several fireworks from Ohio. Ohio, it was legal to send out fireworks in those days. The... Uh service station you're talking about, I think Clyde Howlett's family owned that. Do you remember him? I sure do. That, that that name I had not thought of for quite some time. There were two boys. Clyde was the younger of the two. Harold was the oldest one. Yeah. Harold Howlett. Yeah. I think Harold wound up living up near Columbus, Indiana. And, uh, haven't, he was he was still alive maybe 10 years ago, but I haven't heard anything from him since. Did you ever happen to know the Denbo brothers uh, who lived uh, north of Grantsburg? Uh, and it was Roy and Riley Denbo. Riley had one leg amputated and he walked with crutches. And uh, uh, my dad was going to baptize him in a creek one day. And he, my dad asked me to be there with him because one-legged man would be difficult, you know, to balance. Yeah. Well, I, I was the backup guy in case uh, he couldn't get him back up. But uh, uh, those those two brothers lived together, uh, just the two of them. And uh, 
I, I, I still remember hoping dad could get him back up out of the water. <laughs> Mike, do you play any tennis anymore, Mike? Nope. Okay. Not, not able to play. I got Physically you. Unable to play tennis. Yeah. But I miss it. I really do. I bet you do. Now, let's see. Mike, you and Gordon and I went to Havana, Cuba, didn't we? Yes, that's right. Remember that, and Gordon? Gene Cunningham was on that trip. Uh, there were five of us, right? Ronnie Dembo. Yeah. Gene, Gene Cunningham. Gene Cunningham. And the three of us. Yeah. yeah. That was b before Castro. Right. Before That's right, before Castro. Yeah. And I remember the young ladies would meet the boat, come out, meet the ship, remember? <laughs> Michael, I don't remember anything about that. <laughs> yes. The young ladies would come out and meet the ship. <laughs> and they had a little saying. Of, what was it? I don't think I can repeat it on the. No, I don't think you can. No, I don't no. think. I remember uh, one of the young ladies uh, was named Louisa. Do you remember her name, Gordon? No. Louisa. <laughs> was that was that the the one who worked in the in her mother's dress shop? I think so. I won't. I won't tell the rest of it, man. Okay. Right. <laughs> I remember part of that, what those girls would say. I, ca I can't say what the first part was, but th it was three pesos. <laughs> three pesos. I think they were selling flowers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Now, did all of you have Bill Beasley as your teacher? I yeah. did. Is there anyone that you did, didn't you, Bobby? Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we all did. I had him for algebra uh, freshman year. Yeah. I took every every class he taught. Plain, plain and solid geometry, uh, algebra, advanced algebra, physics. And he would have taught chemistry if we'd had uh, seven who would agree to take it, but couldn't find yeah. that many. Now, Melvin, did you, did you, uh, ha were you a student under your dad? No, I never was. And, uh, I, I didn't, I did not look forward to that. I know you, you went to school to Hester, but, uh, I, I was not too fond of the idea of going to school to my dad. I mean, not the, not the teaching aspect of it, but the parental aspect of it. I got you. I understand. And when, right. I'd go, when I'd go home and my mother would ask, is there any homework tonight? I couldn't lie, could I? No, <laughs> not, the eighth, not the eighth grade when my dad was a teacher. That's funny. My dad's picture was on uh, as a coach in the eighth grade when we won the county tourney. I never saw him shoot a basketball in my life. Never. <laughs> never saw him dribble a basketball. He was coach. And then when we moved to Hope, Indiana, when I was a junior that's near Columbus when I was a junior in high school they gave him a job if he could teach one class of chop never saw my dad have a hammer in his life or a saw he said oh yeah I can teach shop so he he taught a shop class and I was in that class and he seemed to do okay but that was out of his realm it really was <laughs> Alvin, uh, your comment about uh, uh, being a student uh, when your when your parent is the teacher uh, that that rings a bell with me because uh, my wife uh, Marion uh, went to school I, uh, every year until she went into high school when her father was the teacher. And being a preacher's kid, I can tell you, I always sat in the front row because I had to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so I, I understand where you're coming from. So she was, she went to one of the old one, one room schools, number 10 or something. I'm sorry. She went to one of the old one room schools at number 10 or something. A, a, a number of the one room schools around bird's eye area. Okay. 
then she went to Bird's Eye High School. I went, I went to one of those the first year of, uh, that I went to school outside Taswell. I was living with my dad after my parents divorced. And I was in the first grade for a week. And the teacher realized I already knew how to read and write. And then I was in the second grade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, uh, uh, I went from third grade through eighth grade in Grantsburg School, which was one room school when I started there. And then they made a two room school because they built a wall down through the center and put one more stove in. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I really thought that was a, was beneficial to me because in third and fourth grade, I was hearing eighth grade uh, uh, material. And I, yeah. I, I think I benefited from it actually. But some of the schools that Marion went to were, uh, I think one was named Leatherberry. And uh, uh, just, I, I've been to those schools with my dad because he did uh, Bible lessons. And uh, he would go visit weekly and uh, I, I went with him sometimes <clears throat> and he would have me stand up and he would say now Gordon knows all the books of the Bible <laughs> well he would have me recite the, the all the books of the Bible and he'd say now Gordon can do that backwards and the little oh. kid would be amazed and then dad would say turn around Gordon <laughs> <laughs> that's good Well, the other thing the uh, teachers had in the one-room schools was, of course, it was iron discipline. They didn't have to spend a lot of time keeping law and order. Uh, right. I, re I remember I was sitting on the, you know, second grader sitting close to the teacher, and all of a sudden I saw him perk up, and he had spotted an eighth-grade boy asleep. So he reached back in the chalk tray and grabbed one of these wooden back racers and fires away, and I, I heard this thunk, and I looked back there, and here's this kid with this print all the way, you know, down his face, this ribbed print of, of the eraser and a cloud of chalk dust there. And then the teacher says, pick it up. And it picks it up and scurries up front, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't get away with that today, I don't think. I know. <laughs> well, some of our teachers in, uh, in Grantsburg uh, kept a paddle and they would use it occasionally. I never, I never got caught. I, I wouldn't say I didn't do anything to deserve it, but uh, I never got caught doing anything. But I've seen uh, uh, W. W. Jones uh, use this this paddle. Mm -hmm. I, my my mother was a school teacher. She had a rubber hose. Oh boy! Wow. <laughs> now where did she teach, Bobby? Well, uh, she started in the one room schools in Crawford County. Uh, she she taught. Uh, I remember she taught at Magnolia one year. There was 14 students in the whole school. They came from three different families. <laughs> then, then you know, uh, she taught one year in English, and uh, then later uh, in Harris County, she taught third and fourth grade for several years. But I graded a lot of uh, a lot of uh, papers for. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Melvin, I had a, a map last month that I, I think I held it up, showed all the one-room schools with a little dot in the state of Indiana in 1876. There were over 9,000 one-room schools in Indiana in 1876. Well, I thought it was kind of a good experience to have seen it for for one year. It was kind of, you know, like a, a by, window into bygone Americana, you know. I guess the one-room schools finally fizzled out by the mid-50s. They were all gone, I think, in Indiana. Mm -hmm. I know when, uh, in 53, my dad was still teaching and he was teaching at number 10. You know where number 10 was, yeah. you mentioned that. Wow. Out, out toward Grantsburg, down to the left. My mother taught, uh, when I remember one year she taught at Sterling and uh, the school bus came by and picked her up to take her to school. 
some way or oh, other. Really? Well, it's six o'clock. <laughs> you you guys ready to to wrap up? And uh, I guess so. Watch the yeah. six o'clock news. Okay. <laughs> you can, uh, here, you can. Now, uh, <laughs> okay, my daughter just brought a picture. You can't see it very well, but there's my dad with a group of his students. Can you see it sure. very well? Shows very yeah. well, Vic. Yes. Very good. Most of them are well dressed. They have gallus overalls on. Yeah. I think every one of them do, and yes. there's looks like about ten pupils for eight grades. And I asked my dad, "How did you do that?" He said, "I usually find a seventh, eighth grader that could help me along." So. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many of you had Vic's dad as a teacher? I did. How many of you had what? Seventh and eighth grade. Mike did. Bob, did you? Hey, I had him in seventh and eighth grade. Okay. Melvin, did you? I never had my father as a teacher, if that was the question. My, my father. Oh, yeah. I had him in the eighth, seventh and eighth grade. Yeah. Okay. I guess everybody but everybody. Gordon. Everybody but Gordon. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's see. The second Sunday of September looks like it's going to be on the 13th. Ah, which is also Grandparents Day this year. How about that now? <laughs> now, see, that, that's always a tricky one for me because it's, uh, it, it doesn't fall on the same. I guess it's always the second Sunday. Is that right? Or no, right. it's the or it's the Sunday after Second Sunday. Labor Day. Would that always be the second Sunday? Anyhow, the 13th. So you guys can think of uh, some trivia for each other for next month. And glad that uh, Melvin was able to join. And if others, yeah, if you hear back from other folks, the more the merrier. Very good, and I think it's very fortunate that we got through this without telling the and retelling the train story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm sure something has has still either been left out or not yet made up about that story. It's always good times, and I I, I enjoy all of you. I, I'm yeah, happy to definitely. see you. Good to see everybody in good health. By golly, let's keep it that way. Bye bye. Okay. Take care. Bye -bye. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Take care, guys. Eddie. Thanks, Jeremy, for all your help. <laughs> Thank you, all guys. Right. My pleasure. Thanks for letting me join you. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye now. Bye-bye.